All right, so I'm Rebecca. Um, I am currently the VP of Engineering at DevMind Software, and I'm the founder of Rights Code. And as Luke mentioned, I'm here to talk about trust in teams. So raise your hand. How many of you have ever said, I just don't trust that person? Right? And if I asked you why, you probably had like a good reason. Like there was an incident that happened, there was dishonesty, or they were mean or gossiping out for themselves, right? But if I asked you what makes you trust someone, that feels like much harder to answer, right? But it's super important. It's kind of fundamental to who we are as humans. Um, and it's really important to every relationship, including our working relationships and the teams that we work with. Um, and there's also some research that it's, collaborate, that it's correlated with business profitability. So, you know, tell your manager. Um, but what is trust? Feels like a pretty vague thing. Um, so there's a book called The Thin Book of Trust by Charles Feltman, and he has a definition that I really like. And so that is trust is choosing to risk making something you value vulnerable to another person's actions. And there's a couple pieces of this. Um, the first one is choosing to risk. So in essence, trust is a risk assessment. We think about our past experience with this person and other people, and we decide if we're going to take this risk. It also involves something we value. Um, so what are the things that we care about at work? Like, hopefully we care about the quality of our work, we care about our team, we care about our own happiness, we care about not getting fired, all of those things. Um, and then the last piece is making it vulnerable to someone else's actions. So normally when we talk about vulnerability, uh, we're talking about security issues, like there's vulnerability in this code and we need to submit a security patch, right? Um, but the good part of, about vulnerability is that it leads to innovation and growth and positive things. Um, and where do we talk more about vulnerability and stuff than romantic relationships? Um, and we can learn something from that. And remember that whether you like someone you work with or not, like you're in a relationship with them, you interact with them, you have to deal with them. So um, there is an institute in Seattle called the Gottman Institute. Um, and they like videotape couples interacting, and then they can like apparently predict whether they stay together or not. Um, but one of the things they found is that they could actually make these predictions pretty accurately within like 10 minutes. Because trust isn't about big things, it's actually about all of the small moments that we have interacting with people. And that makes it in some ways easy, like cool, it's, I don't have to make a grand gesture, and in other ways hard, because it's like really about every single interaction that you have with a person. So how do you build or rebuild trust? <clears throat> the first thing that we need to do is really kind of debug it, identify the line that's broken, right? And Brene Brown, um, who's a shame and vulnerability researcher, and um, Oprah's a big fan, um, has a, acronym for the elements of trust called breathing. And I think this is like super useful. So the first one is boundaries. Do you respect my boundaries when you're not clear about what's okay and not okay you ask and you're willing to say no? So I once um, was leading a team and our CTO would like sometimes do drive-by pull requests. As a manager now, I totally get it. You want to write code. Um, but as a team lead, I mostly found it annoying. And then one day he like pulled a story um, and it was about naming. So the thing was, we had all agreed that this naming was bad, we needed to rename this class or whatever, um, but we could not actually agree on what to rename it. So here comes the CTO like submitting a pull request and making that decision. And so in a lot of ways, this was a violation of boundaries, which are kind of expectations. Like we expected that the team could make the decision about what to name it, the team like was managing their um, backlog of work, and it wasn't that the CTO couldn't do it, but there was sort of a boundary that we expected them to ask or get context, right? And that's really important because boundaries aren't about like hard and fast rules. They're more like fences with gates, and they can be moved, and we can cross them, but we need to be clear and explicit about where they are. Um, and I think being really clear about expectations is an essential part of this, um, and that includes like success criteria, like how do I know that you met this expectation or I met it and what's the time frame? So the second element of trust is reliability. You do what you say you'll do. At work, this means staying aware of your competencies and limitations so you don't overpromise and are able to deliver on commitments and balance committing priorities. Um, 
So in the book Understanding Computers and Cognition, um, Terry Winogar, grad, um, talks about the promise cycle, and that's something that we use a lot in like three-way handshakes and networking or thinking about um, promises in JavaScript, similar idea. So that guy, Charles Feltman, extracted that into a larger cycle of commitment. And this seems really obvious, except we actually miss a lot of these pieces. Like if I walk into the kitchen and I'm like, why can't people just wash their own dishes? I'm kind of making a request that people wash their own dishes, but I'm not really being clear about what the request is or who I'm talking to. The other place is like waiting for someone to actually say yes or no. Um, and then once they do, being clear about what they're saying yes or no to. Like, are they going straight with my request or like are we negotiating some aspect of that? And the last piece I think we forget is reporting back. And that is part of staying aware of our limitations too. Like, if you can't do something, report back. Um, I think a lot of agile processes actually like handle this in a lot of ways, stand-ups, planning poker. And so the main thing is just like clarifying and your requests and your commitments. So the third element of trust is accountability. You own your mistakes, apologize, and make amends. So um, my first job as a developer, our um, deployment basically involved FTPing files to the production server. And we were using an access data database also, which is just a file. So of course, at some point, I went to deploy and overwrote the entire database and all of the data and had no backup. So I had to call my boss and be like, I totally fucked up. Um, and it ended up being okay. There were some server backups, whatever. I could have said, I totally fucked up, but our deploy process is stupid and we should have a better system, right? Which would be true, <laughs> but in order to sort of take accountability, I needed to take responsibility for my actions and the impact they had on that. So the fourth thing is vault. You don't share information or experiences that aren't yours to share. I need to know my confidences are kept and you are not sharing with me information about other people that should be kept confidential. So I actually think like Slack and chat apps often lead to a lot of back channel communication, um, which is effectively gossip even though we don't think of it that way. Um, I once worked with a guy who literally like live chatted me a rant that someone else was having. And at some point I was like, I mean, it's great to know this, but does he know that you're telling me this, right? Um, because confidentiality isn't really like, you haven't broken my confidentiality. If I see you telling me something that I think that other person wouldn't want me to know or um, would want you to keep confidential, I'm gonna trust you less. Right? So there's a cycle where we observe behavior and then assume someone's going to act similarly. Um, and so asking, like, does someone know you're telling me this is actually a really useful way. There's also sort of difficult circumstances where saying nothing creates gossip. And so um, you want to like kind of be big. This is like they ha they're having personal issues, right? Um, and also ask a person what you can share. Um, all right, so the next element of trust is integrity. You cho choose courage over comfort. You choose what is right over what is fun, fast, or easy. You choose to practice your values rather than just professing them. So I think when we talk about code, um, we talk about this a lot, and we do a pretty good job. We do less of a good job when it comes to teams and culture. So um, how many of us have heard someone say like, oh, we let our developers choose the best tool for the job, right? Which is like great. Um, but if your entire organization uses Ruby and Rails and then someone comes in and is like, I think C Sharp is the best like, thing to fix it. They may be right in some ways in terms of like, the technical problem, but like, that's not probably gonna go over well. So like, that statement that we let our developers choose the best tool for the job isn't entirely true. And I think that part of this is we need to be explicit about what matters. I have really strong feelings about how CSS should be named but I value consistency and team buy-in more than like my stupid opinions about CSS. Um, and so sometimes we just have to check ourselves that like, is this about something that matters? If so, let's talk about it, and if not, maybe you should let it go. Um, element of trust, non-judgment. And I think these really build on each other. I can ask you for what I need, and you can ask for what you need. We can talk about how we feel without judgment. Um, so in 2013, it was my first time org organizing GoRuko. I also was the first Write Speed Code conference. I also fostered and then adopted a dog who turned out to be a puppy mill breeder, which basically meant she was an adorable, lovely pain in my ass. Um, and 
and so at some point I had to go to my boss and I was like, dude, I'm in over my head. Like I bit off more than I can chew. Like I need help. Fortunately, conferences have end dates. Um, and I probably should have done that earlier and I didn't because I was judging myself for asking for help and needing help, right? And I think that like this one, one of the things we can do is like deal with our own shit. Like deal with our own sense of judgment and shame around like I can't get this done, I can't do this, I don't know how to do it. The last aspect of trust is generosity. You extend the most generous interpretation possible to intentions, words, and actions of others. I think this is hard to do without any of the other aspects. Um, so this is a picture from GoRuGo 2012, and in that corner is Abel, who's sitting over there, and I've worked with a bunch of times. And I'm kind of an intense, direct person. Um, and we were having a team discussion. I was kind of frustrated. We came out of it, and Abel chatted me, and he was like, hey, Rebecca, that was really harsh, what you said. I don't remember the exact details. But this was an instance, like, he could have been like, hey, you're being an asshole, right? But he didn't. He, he was like, hey, you were really harsh, and I don't think you meant it that way, right? So he was sort of telling me, like, I assume that your intentions are good, but this was the impact, and I want you to know. And so that sort of builds trust. So how do we think about rebuilding trust on a team? Um, I actually think monitoring is like a great way to do it. I had a team where they had some trust issues, and I started making them like basically rate each other on this braving. Um, and it was really interesting to see that kind of change um, and also gives people a shared language for how to talk about issues that they're having. But in general, having some sort of checkpoint that says like, are these things happening? Um, identify the breach. Like having the elements of trust allows us to say, okay, where are things broken? And be specific and give specific, constructive, actionable feedback to someone as opposed to just being like, people don't trust you. And the last thing is I think that modeling good behavior is really important. I'm a big believer in like subversive, ground up change in organizations. And one of the ways to do that is to say, like respond positively when someone asks for help to, um, you know, ask for help yourself, to make amends, to apologize, take responsibility for your actions, people will start to see that and that starts um, to have a cascading effect. So trust in teams, thank you. <laughs> I'm